Okay, let's move on to something that, uh, which is, you know, not many experts in the field, and you should know about this, is that P3, REC 2020, and calibration or profiling monitors. Yep. Um, obviously, there may be a need in the change of the probes that we have or the meters that we have. What's what's the story there? Is 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 calibration for for 2020 hard? Can we keep using the same probes we've got? Can you help us on that sort yeah. of story? Uh, I mean, gamma color uh, saturation um, actually relatively straightforward. Uh, majority of the probes that people have got out there, they you know, they'll work. They may struggle with HDR on the concept of brightness because they may oversaturate. Um, but again, you know, you can put a, a neutral density filter right. in front and you know yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So to be fair, the hardware is pretty much capable regardless. Um, you may need say, to, to, you know, to do something just to, to, to make it capable of doing silly levels of nits. Right. Um, color saturation, uh, gamut, um, yeah, again, most of them will deal with everything within the visual spectrum, which means REC 2020. So again, not a major issue. The problem is that there are virtually no displays out there that can do REC 2020 properly That's right. but that in itself isn't an issue you know we, we've been watching um, you know uh, um, digital cinema for years which uses an XYZ color space which is even bigger than rec 2020 right. but it isn't trying to map everything no. into that color it's just saying this is where we map the colors to within it so you know so it's a big gamut but we're only using that much and it means that you know as, as, as um, capabilities improve, you know, we, we have that flexibility. Um, you know, the, the XYZ spec is a bit stupid because it's just too massive. Um, REC 2020 at least maintains um, the, 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 the color spectrum within the visual locus, but again, it's, it's big. Um, very few colors in the real world exist outside of what we're used to in the sense of REC 709. You know, there are you know certain fruits and flowers they they you know they're on the edge and they push it but actually if well, you I think, I think going from 709 to p3 is a big step and yeah. i can't wait to have a p3 yeah. monitor it, it, if you and if you look at the um the, you know the the, the uhd tv specification that you know their, their concept of rec 2020 is any display that can do about 90 percent of p3 so that that's really? yeah okay. that's that's what they say is is a, um, an acceptable monitor, TV, whatever, um, so long as it can do ish 90% of P3. But again, mapped within REC 2020. Okay, now this is a, a contentious question in that uh, REC 20, 2020 is like a theoretical color space that you can't really get to realistically. Um, no, you could, you could. You could. It's, 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 it's all within the visual spectrum. It is, but the, there's issues, etc. when you go to such fine primaries yeah. between eyes and other issues that tend to, people want to water it down, so those you, problems disappear. Yeah, you, you, need, you need very narrow bandwidth uh, colour. That's um, right. To, yeah, so to make in, it especially in cinema, there's a lot of technical issues where it's not really feasible to get proper because of the, mainly for speckle issues, to mitigate the speckle, really, you have to dirty it up, and to dirty it up means you need to yeah. pull away from it's, the primaries. Again, very few images that you will ever see in the world yes. actually push the saturation to the, the peak primary value. I agree. Uh, so again, it's it, you know, realistically, RET 2020 is more about a, a, an envelope that contains right. the image, and you're going to use a much smaller subset of colours for the real image itself. So this gets to the, my main point here is that a lot of displays coming out from di different manufacturers have percentage of REC 2020, yep. 85, 89, 91, you know. Yep. The fact that we have facilities yep. with all these different monitors yep. with different actual primary yep. targets. It means you're never gonna see the same image twice. Is that a problem? Um, for, for your average viewer, no, because they wouldn't know the difference anyway. Yes. Technically, it means that if you watch the same project, film, yes. whatever, on four or five different displays, you will not see the same colours because the mapping of the colours into REC 2020 will be different on every display. Okay, so this, this leads me to the big post-production problem of REC 2020 is that everyone, Canon, a Sony or a ESA or an FSI, they're all buying different monitors with okay. different, so how yep. can I, and with big productions, a lot yep. of the content's flying between facilities yep. and they have these different 2020 monitors. Yep. How do we, is there a way to deal with that or do we have no. to standardize no, or what do we do? It, within, within the post world, it, it, it won't be done like that. You know, the, 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 the kind of approach will, 
the approach for the post-production of a project will actually be P3 because they're, you know, they're, you've, you've got a standard that everybody knows and can work to. Right. The minute that you say, well, we're going to go beyond that to Rec 2020, you've got displays that may or may not do you know, the full range. So to be fair, I suspect and I'm pretty certain that most places will actually work to a given standard for that project. So, you know, they will say, right, we are doing this to P3, or we're doing this to 75% of Rec 2020, whatever, and here are the primaries right. that we're working okay, to. Yes, yes. But, th but that, that, is, that is the way that the UHD TV standard is supposed to work, right. that when you master to UHD TV Rec 2020, part of that specification is the display we used had these primary points. Right. And then when it goes to another display, then it will gamut map to try to maintain the, the, the body-centric colours to be the same, the, the periphery colours is where it will roll off. There'll be some form of gamut mapping. That doesn't exist in the spec. Nobody has said, this is how we gamut map from this display that can do 70% of P3 yes. to this display that does 60%. You know, how, how do we manage that 10% you know, of, of, of error? That doesn't exist in the standard. So those displays it, at, those, at that, the periphery of the gamut will be different. And there is no way around that. That is, that yeah, is but, but, what it gets. But, but I, I do find that your, your very pragmatic approach in saying, well, we have 2020, we may want to extend past P3, but in the situation where monitors can, are all different, but monitors can all reach a certain percentage of 2020 and we can qualify that those post facilities actually grade or map to that percentage and say yep. we are working with, the, with this playground, this yep. is our new sandbox yep. and we're all agreed that this is the sandbox we'll play in yep. and then we, can, then we can assure that the colours are the same from facility to facility. Yep. And that's, there's no standard for that, but it's a very pragmatic and common sense way to approach it's, it. It's the only way of dealing with it. You yeah. know, you, you, when when you are you start a project, if you're going to, to say we are doing this in 2020, you've basically got to say, but this is the gamut we're working in. And, you know, if, if if that doesn't happen, then all bets are off. All right, cool. Well, anything else you want to say before we leave? Fantastic, uh, great information here. Very happy with uh, our conversation today. No Thank you very much, Steve. My pleasure, mate. Anyway, that's James Gardner with Steve Shaw from uh, Lightspace at NAB 2016. Bye for now.